In the span of one week, I went from looking like this to looking like this, and it was the result of seven days worth of dieting. Now you're probably thinking, how can you actually make any meaningful changes to your physique in only one week? Well, come along for the journey with me. So I'm currently cutting weight. And the reason is because for a few months, I was enjoying my food a bit too much, I would say. And it eventually got to the point where I'd put on a bit of excess body fat, ended up looking something like this, and so I decided that it was time to just reset and lose a bit of that excess body fat I'd gained. So I've been cutting or trying to lose weight for about one month now. And this will be just one week of how I eat to go about losing some of that body fat. So in the morning, I'll have a scoop of protein powder, a scoop of creatine and a teaspoon of spirulina and I'll mix that with water and drink that before I go to the gym. I'll also usually have a coffee with a bit of almond milk. Almond milk's better because it has less calories. Then after I train, I'll have this protein smoothie with almond milk, frozen fruit, protein powder, and usually a banana. And every day I have this protein smoothie after I train, as well as the one that I have before I train. For lunch, we've got some leftover roast chicken. Normally I would be eating this chicken with rice, but today I don't have any leftover rice in the fridge to eat it with. So I'm just eating it plain. And you know, realistically things like that are gonna happen. Your diet isn't gonna be perfect every single day. So you just gotta adapt to it. Because I didn't have any rice with the chicken, I decided to have this protein shake instead. Now for dinner, I'm having takeaway. And normally I wouldn't eat out for dinner, but all things considered, I think this was a pretty reasonable option. As always, my monkey brain kicks in after dinner and wants to eat sugar, but nevertheless, make it back to my room and unfortunately we end day one of eating in a surplus. Day two's morning is the exact same as always, two protein shakes and a coffee. Day two's lunch was a little bit different because I went to go have lunch with some friends and there was a lot of great food. I tried my best not to stuff myself. I'm not entirely sure how it went. I don't know how many calories I ate during lunch, but you know, if you have a Coke, no sugar, then it's all good, but I do have my reservations about no sugar drinks, which I'll talk about later as well. Dinner is again takeaway, and it's looking like day two is a bit of an L. Couldn't really track the macros either, so it looks like this one was a bit of a surplus. Day three is just some chicken and rice for lunch. And then for dinner, having some leftover duck with rice, which is gonna put us roughly in a 700 calorie deficit. It is now day four and I've opted for a long ice black coffee. It's got no calories in it compared to your normal coffee, which can have even 200, 300 calories. Day four is also the day where we're meal prepping. And if you're like me and think cooking is just an absolute chore, meal prep is so important because it takes away the need to cook, but you still have access to high quality food. So for lunch, I've just had chicken thigh by itself with no rice. The reason I'm not, overly fussed about not having that rice with the chicken was that if you're trying to lose weight, getting rid of calories isn't gonna do you any harm, right? That being said though, I definitely think there is a place for carbs in your diet. And the whole myth about carbs being like the devil in terms of weight loss is just absolutely not true. And also just another side note, I think if you eat heaps of carbs, it can also take a toll on your brain's ability to function properly. So a lot of people after having lunch or whatever experience like brain fog and then can't really concentrate in their work all that much. I think taking carbs away from your lunch can definitely help with that as well. For dinner, we have steak. I only had two of these steaks, some rice and some corn, and that's gonna put us in a 500 calorie deficit. Day five is chicken and rice once again. And then for dinner is also chicken and rice with some salad as well. This put us in an almost 400 calorie deficit for the day. So we start off day six as per usual for lunch, chicken and rice, and dinner is steak, 
Chinese broccoli and rice. And again, I only had two of these steaks. We're now on day seven. Lunch is chicken and rice. So I've just finished my lunch. And I mean, I think by now you'd know that I eat chicken and rice for lunch basically every day. And I mean, I think that a lot of people would get bored by that and wouldn't be able to commit to eating this way every day because it's just so bland. And I'm not gonna say that every time I eat chicken and rice, it's the best meal in the world. But I think another way to stick to that is by just creating as many obstacles as possible to stop you from doing the activity that you don't wanna do. So for example, if you're eating donuts at lunch every day, you'd want to do something that would make you less likely to do that. So the most obvious example is just don't have any donuts in the house. And then if you don't, if you've restricted access to donuts then you physically cannot eat donuts. A problem for me is that there is a lot of just bad food in my house. So there's chocolate, there's chips, there's, there's all this stuff. As an example, just, I do find it difficult to, I guess, not snack on those things, but you just gotta have, you do something that is gonna make you less likely to do it. So for example, I've just come outside to have lunch and that way I haven't even looked at any other food that's in my house. And it's just small things like that I think you can do when it comes to eating that's gonna make you more likely to stick to the good behavior that's ultimately gonna lead to the most progress. And for dinner here, we've got a steak, Hainanese chicken rice, which if you are a real one, you will know what that dish is. And we have some salad as well. I didn't eat that whole steak. I only ate, I'd say a quarter of it, but I had all the chicken rice. And Hainanese chicken rice is a pretty lean meal, which puts us at an around 700 calorie deficit. Our last day starts off as per, but for lunch, I have a dilemma. So I've just realized that I'm out of chicken. So I don't have anything to eat for lunch. And as I was saying before, this is why having food prepared in advance for your lunch or for whatever meals you're having, just makes it so much easier to stick to the foods that are gonna make you progress. So right now, I'm just gonna show you what's in my house and the options of things I have to eat. So starting off in the pantry, it looks like some kind of two minute noodles here or yeah, I don't know. Lovely stuff. We've got some chocolate there as well. Lovely stuff. We've got all these packets of chips. Don't know what that is. Chocolates, Hershey's, Reese's. Oh yeah, mate. Peanuts. Now just coming to the living room as well, we've got all these packets of biscuits like Again, it's just I don't know what that is, some leftover present from a hamper or something. More nuts, I think chocolate in there. So like, it just goes to show that when you don't have the proper systems in place to ensure that you're eating correctly, it just makes it so difficult. So because I have really nothing that I can eat, I think I'm gonna go buy something. Obviously not ideal, but I can't bother cooking. And I think this just highlights the importance of meal prep. I just went and bought half a chicken. It was only $12, just side note. But my plan is I bought this half a chicken here and then I've warmed up a bit of rice as well to eat with it. And I feel like it would have been extremely easy to just like go have KFC or some other type of junk food. I mean, when you go out to eat, it's so much easier to just get something that's gonna have more calories in it. No doubt this has more calories than what I'd normally eat, that's for sure. That's, I'm not trying to say that I'm immune from this either, but again, it just emphasize, I'm just trying to emphasize how important it is to have systems in place like meal prep that just makes it so much easier to stick to a good diet. And another thing is that while that might not always be possible, so you, you know, you might not have any food around, you can't be bothered cooking, etc then try to commit to damage limitation and you know try opt for something that's not gonna be as detrimental and it's not gonna blow out your calories for the day. Here, I mean, there's probably, if I just had to eye test it, maybe 600 calories, which is less than half, I mean, no, sorry, not less than half, but you know, almost half of using a box, which is definitely a good outcome. Got some rice here as well, maybe 100, 200 calories as well. So if I eat all of this, maybe 700, 800 calories all up, which is probably more than I normally have, but only by two or 300 calories. So all in all, I don't think it's that bad of an outcome. 
I'm so much hungrier after eating that than I would be eating my normal chicken. And I reckon that probably what I just ate probably had more calories than what I'd normally eat. So when you go out to eat, these places just put these kind of things in the food to keep you hungry so that eventually you buy more of the food and they're making more profits at the end of the day. Now, I don't know, I felt really like anti-vaxxer type. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waffling. The upshot is, is that after eating that, that I reckon still had more calories in it, I'm still hungry. And it's just another reason why I think going out to eat is suboptimal. And cooking for yourself is ultimately the best way. After lunch, I was again craving something sweet. After a lot of meals that I have, I find that I have heaps of cravings. So something that I experimented with was drinking no sugar drinks. These literally have no calories in them. So you can kind of get that sweet hit by having one of these or a similar no sugar drink. So that's what I did for a while. I, I think definitely no sugar drinks have a place in dieting in that if you really have a sweet tooth and you drink one of these, it's good because obviously you're drinking no calories, you're satisfying the sweet tooth. My only reservation is that no sugar drinks use aspartame, which is some kind of artificial sweetener which has no calories. Supposedly is a cancer inducing thing, but what I did notice and what I've also researched about aspartame is that it can have an impact on your gut health. And I found when I was drinking these every day, I was having problems going to the toilet. So I've stopped drinking no sugar drinks. Once I actually stopped drinking these, I kind of didn't have that urge to have something sweet. And after you do that for a little bit of time, I think the sweet craving just goes away. And our last day finishes off with some fish and rice. So it's now the end of the week and did I lose weight and was there any change in my physique? So this morning I weighed in at 73.2, which is one kilo lighter than I started at last week. And this was my physique in the same lighting and with a pump as well, like in the before photo. And I don't think there's all that much difference in my physique. I think they're pretty similar overall, but I think that just goes to show that cutting is a slow process and you just have to stick with it for time to eventually see results. So if you enjoyed, consider subscribing and all of that.